Hello, I am um, Chico Maids Quindia Matlapanti. I'm a Mexican American artist living in Mexico City. And, uh, and I'm gonna share a painting with you today, the first page of the Codex Tezcatlipoca, which is also called the Pejervari, and um, which I've actually shared before, but I shared it in Spanish, so I'm gonna do it today in English. So this is the, um, this page, uh, well, <laughs> it's upside down, uh, right here. It's the, um, the first page of the Codex Tezcatlipoca, and it's like a map of the universe, essentially. So this is my version of it. The, um, the codex, I don't have a printout here of the Codex Escalipoca, but it's essentially the same. I added these figures on either side because the original format is square, and I'll explain who they are in a minute. But uh, aside from them, the imagery in center is the same, it's just drawn in my style. So uh, what this is, is a kind of a map. So in the center, you can see um, Chiyotekutli, the turquoise lord, who's the god of fire, time, and wisdom. And he is the unmoving point at the center of the cosmos about which all being spins. Uh, the, the, these, it's kind of like a St. Andrew's cross uh, or a flower, which would be more like the Mesoamerican way of thinking of it. So the petals on the flower here represent the east, here they represent the north, the west, and the south. And uh, so this represents space in terms of uh, east, north, west, and south, and it represents time. So um, here, the, like this, this uh, crocodile, there's a, um, uh, a jaguar right here, a deer right there, and the dots that are in the middle represent days. So uh, this is like the first day in an Aztec month, a tresena. Uh, and these are the 13 days of the Tresena that are indicated afterwards. So this would be the second day of the next, the first day of the next month. So it's basically um, laying out in time and space, um, time and space. So in the Mesoamerican worldview, there is no distinction between time and space. They're the same thing. So this area to the, to above Xiutekutli uh, represents, um, it represents the East and it also represents the days that are associated with the East. So this particular almanac is uh, protected or guarded by nine regents. I'm gonna stand, I think it's gonna be easier. So um, the regents who uh, protect it are represented here. At the first the first of the nine lords is Yuta Kutli, and then they continue here, and they go counterclockwise around the image. So it begins with um, Itzli, and Pitzin Tekutli. And then it goes on to these two lords, who are the god of corn and the god of death, the goddesses of water and sexuality, and the gods of, um, of wild things and the heart of the mountain and of rain. So they are the lords who hold the universe in its place from the four directions. Uh, each direction is also associated with a tree. So this tree is growing out of the sun, it's a plumed tree here, there's a tree that is a, a cathorn cactus tree uh, growing out of, offer, of sacred offerings. And as you go around the image, each side has a tree. So those trees are the, um, are the trees that hold the universe in its place from the four directions. So, uh, so what this map is doing is telling us um, the qualities of space and time according to the gods and the trees who rule over it from the place center. Uh, um, here we have Jyotikudli. So the center is conceived of as being like uh, the navel of the universe. It's like a jade stone uh, or a turquoise enclosure um, in which Jyotikudli has his home. So he is fire and he is wisdom. As fire, he represents the hearth, which is at the center of the house. He represents a spark of life at the center of, of us, of our bodies. And he is the spark that generates all existence. So he stands here, flame, uh, in front of a, uh, of a green blue stone, wreathed in flame, which represents his wisdom and his power. And from his body emerge these streams of blood, which uh, flow out to, towards the four directions. So... If I uh, move it closer, you can see there's a hand here in one of the streams of blood. There's a head. There is a, um, right here, a rib cage and a leg. Where is it? There's a, a leg. So that is the body of Tezcatlipoca. Uh, Tezcatlipoca is lord of 
destruction, chaos, and the whims of fate. And he is a lord of destruction. So the blood um, flows from his body towards the four directions, which is to say it is a sacrifice. Um, the strength of his blood, which animates existence and sets the wheel of life in motion. Um, and then uh, you come towards these, these gods. So, for example, in the east, you have Itzli and Pilsintekurli. Itzli wears a, um, a knife as a headdress, and uh, Pilsintekurli is the sun. So Itzli represents sacrifice and death, and Pitsintikutli represents the sun in the morning, the newborn sun. And then at the bottom is the sun rising in the east, uh, and from it rises the, the plumed tree. So, the, oh, so then if you go around to this side, for example, in the north, you have, uh, oh, the, sorry, that's the west. Uh, uh, that's the south, I mean. Here you have Mikletikutli, um, the god of death, and the god of corn, and these are in the north. So they're telling you the qualities that the different directions have. So for example, in the north, which is associated with the realm of the dead, Mictlan, and uh, the afterlife and the wisdom of the ancestors, Mictlan is standing there. It, as the north, which is in Mexico would be like the northern deserts, there's the, uh, this cactus tree. Um, it's associated with sacrifice and making offerings to the ancestors, such as the dead, Mictlan and bones are metaphorically associated with the idea of seeds and rebirth. Um, you can only have rebirth if you have death first. So there is Sinteotl, the god of corn. So it's telling you that these days that are on the edge, which would be the days snake, um, um, snake, grass, rain, and death are associated with the north. And, uh, and they're giving you uh, they're giving you ideas about the qualities that those days have and that that direction has. So here, for example, we have sacrifice and the sun, and at the bottom is the newborn sun. So the east is, you know, clearly something that you would relate to the idea of, um, of new, new birth, new creations, and the sun rises. The sun rises in the east, after all. Um, so what they're telling you here is the quality that is necessary for this to take place. So... Um, one of the most important stories uh, in the, uh, among the sacred narratives that have been handed down to us is the story of the creation of the sun. That actually happened two days ago, was the day Nawi Olin, which is the day of the birth of the sun. So in this story, um, the, the Teteo, the gods, asked two Teteo to sacrifice themselves. One was poor and ugly and deformed, and the other was rich and handsome. And uh, when it came time to do the sacrifices, the rich, handsome one made offerings of quetzal feathers, plumes, of, uh, you know, like uh, precious plumes, gold, uh, jade, turquoise, and things like that. And the poor one made offerings of his own blood. And when the day came to sacrifice themselves by leaping into the fire at Teotihuacan, the rich one, as a senior lord, is supposed to go first, but he became afraid and couldn't bring himself. So the other lord, uh, Nanawatsin, leapt, walked fearlessly forward and leapt into the fire, and uh, and he died. And when Tixistikatl, the lord of snails, saw that that had happened, he also went forward and leaped into the fire. I'm sorry, I'm pausing. It says I have an unstable connection and I'm not sure if I should continue or not. <laughs> um, it says that they're waiting to connect me. Okay, so then Tixisikatl, the Lord of Snails, walked forward and leapt into the fire. And um, they were both born as two equally brilliant sons. Um, the Teteo thought it was unfair that the coward, the god, should be as, um, as brilliant as the one who was brave. So they threw a rabbit in his face and uh, dimmed his light and he fell back into the underworld and became the moon. But the sun, when he reached the zenith, the, the zenith couldn't move. And uh, he needed the blood of the gods to give him the strength to be able to move. So we have a spiritual energy in our heart called Theolia, which is what sets the universe in motion. Um, it's, a, it's expressed physically in the body as blood and as the heart. But it's actually the spiritual energy that moves through everything. So the Teteo uh, sacrifice themselves. They cut their throats and pull out their heart. And their blood rose to the sun and gave him the sacred strength in the theolia that allowed him to move. So the only reason the sun exists is because of an act of primal sacrifice on the part of the Teteo at the dawn of time. And all things, in fact, require sacrifices. So, for example, the corn you eat 
isn't just a, a vegetable. It's not just like a fruit. It's um, it's a god. It's a physical god. Like the gods are in the things that they manifest themselves as. So every time you eat an ear of corn, you're eating the flesh and body of a god who has given himself up willingly for you in an act of sacrifice. So um, so therefore, sacrifice is necessary on the part of us to maintain the cosmos and the balance uh, that it it requires. So I think that this is something that is, um, we're living through the negative uh, consequences of now. Um, Western uh, give uh, value to the idea of sacrifice. And as a result, we're living in a world of global warming and all of these uh, really disastrous consequences of our selfish uh, and individualistic um, culture. Um, and that's precisely what Mesoamerican cultures were against. It was like happiness is a gift to us from the gods and personal pleasure and individuality is a gift to us from the gods, but that's not why we exist. We exist to sacrifice. We exist to maintain the order of the cosmos in its, in its, um, in its order. And that's the only way for the gods to give to us uh, what they give us to support us is by us giving to them. Um, this could be ritually enacted through actual blood sacrifice by piercing your earlobes, your tongue, um, other parts of your body with, um, with thorns and, and spilling your blood, blood and sacrifice, but it can also be done through the acts you undertake as a human being. I think today that would mean um, maybe supporting like, like uh, movements that are against global warming and doing what you need to do to uh, maintain the balance and act, enacting the sacrifices of the God's activists. So anyways, all of that is to get back to the scene at the top, which shows, um, which shows the sun, and sacrifice, Itzli, uh, facing across each other. So what it's telling us is that this is a region of creation, new birth, um, youth, joy, happiness, good luck, good fortune. All of these kinds of things surge and are born in the in the uh, east and are symbolized by Pilsintikutli, the youthful god of the sun. However, all of that can only exist as an act of, uh, through sacrifice, the sacrifice of the gods at the dawn of time in which they enact every single day to give us life and the sacrifice of human beings to keep that, um, that, uh, that cycle. They represent the, I'm gonna move on to the other elements of this, um, of this map. So on the corners uh, between, so these are telling, these are dividing the space and time into the years that, um, that carry us through time, which are held on the backs of these birds. And on either side, I painted Oshomoko and Sipaktonat. So this is Oshomoko, and this on the other side is Sipaktonat. So uh, the first man and woman that the Teteo created at the dawn of the first creation were named Oshomoko and Sipaktonat. Sipaktonat was a man and Oshomoko was a woman. To Oshomoko, they gave the calendar, uh, this same calendar that I'm reading to you. They, uh, they gave him how to paint it, how to understand it, and how to read it. And you can see at his feet the paint brushes that he uses to paint the, um, the calendar. He with the sun and the moon and with like these different elements of the duality, who they are. She's pregnant because she is our, our grandmother and our first ancestor. And they are uh, standing on either side of the, um, of the, of the flower of the Codex um, de Scalipoca. Uh, worshiping before the mysteries of the Tonalpawali and of uh, Ometeo, because ultimately that entire flower, all of those gods, all of those directions, the trees, and everything painted there is a manifestation of the one single truth. And then, so um, thank you very much. Uh, and I'll be back later with another, another presentation of another work of art.